now let's put our diagramming into action. So we've already learned our shorthand that uh, the surface emitting light is going to have a curved, sur a curved arc. Uh, if the light coming out of that surface is shortwave, it's going to be a straight line uh, from a different surface. This is going to be some surface at temperature 1. Uh, a different lower temperature surface is uh, potentially a very good long wave emitter. Also having a, a, a curved arc for the emitting surface and a wiggly line, in this case a hole that, sig that signifies that long wave band. That's that band greater than 3,000, 3,000 to um, 50,000 or 2,000 to 30,000 uh, nanometers. Um, whereas the short wave is that 250 to 2,500 nanometer range. Um, in any uh, other notations we're going to come across here in just a second, but you can see here I've got a diagram of the sky dome. Uh, this is pretty common uh, arc that we're going to have in the class. Just saying, that, look, there's this entire sky here, and uh, it in and of itself is going to be a source of, of light. How do we diagram that? Well, look, first let's let's put a, a receiving surface on the ground. Uh, we'll say that we have a solar panel on the ground here and it's going to be a receiver of light all right and so i'm going to now start diagramming i know that the sun is a source of emission of light that's going to be shortwave light right shortwave light uh, as we will see in just a second is effectively transparent to the atmosphere so it's passing straight through the atmosphere without being absorbed and ultimately it's going to come to that come to the surface a portion of it might reflect off the rest of that light is going to be absorbed by our solar collector and thus generating excited states for electrons uh, if it's a photovoltaic panel hot water if it's a solar hot water system right but that that's our main uh, source of energy that we think of and that's that beam uh, uh, component of light that we'll talk about eventually. But there are other sources of light in this system and we want to diagram them. So for example, we know that the sun will hit the ground, right? And it'll reflect off the ground. We're going to have a lot of light that's coming and hitting the ground and reflecting off of it. And that, uh, that reflected light off of the ground is called the albedo. But in our case, we're just diagramming it as a, a check mark on here and it will ultimately also be uh, a secondary, but a, a source of light for this tilted panel. That's the, the participation of the ground in the shortwave energy. The, let's undo a couple of this to create some space. The sky itself is full of backscattering, right? We had this diagram of forward scattering and backscattering across the atmosphere. I'm going to diagram all of that as kind of just straight lines coming off of the surface of the sky dome. Uh, with the idea that all of this light is still reflected light. It's still scattered light. It's not emitted light. Otherwise, I would have a, a curved surface here, but I don't. I've got just a straight line showing that basically this is all reflected light. And so this is a diffuse reflected light source for our solar panel, just as the ground is a diffuse reflected light source um, as well. All of these together are our shortwave component sources of light for our solar energy conversion system. Now, the ground and the, um, the solar panel are, are each going to also have their own thermal characteristics. Everything glows, right? This is, this is one of the uh, principles of light is that, you know, ultimately, everything's going to glow. And it's, it's all going to have uh, some, some uh, light characteristic to it. In our case, it's going to be the ground and the panels emitting long wave light. So these guys are emitting long wave light upward into the atmosphere. The atmosphere itself has a temperature. It, it has a, a, an ambient temperature. All those gases have a temperature. And so those gases are going to emit as well both down to the ground and up out into space. And so we have actually pretty well diagrammed a lot of the major uh, energy balances of light. 
just using this simple notation. You can see that uh, the temperature of the ground is going to be one source of long wave. The temperature of the solar energy conversion system is going to be another source. The temperature of the atmosphere is another source. And of course, the temperature of the sun is the source of our short wave light. And uh, we know the sun is approximated by a black body at about 5,777 Kelvin, uh, whereas all of our terrestrial surfaces are going to be somewhere in the order of uh, 300 Kelvin, much, much lower than the temperature of the sun. And yet, we can see that we have a great way to do some quick diagramming to hopefully understand